Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here. We hope you've been enjoying the 24-hour virtual fundraiser around the globe for snow leopards. We're excited to have you join this virtual hike today on the Snow Leopard Trail, where we'll be going to the Gobi Desert of Mongolia with one of my incredible colleagues, Nadia Midjadorj. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Jen. I am uh, Jennifer Snell Rollman, the Snow Leopard um, Trust Assistant Director of Conservation. And uh, Nadia is a conservation scientist with the Snow Leopard Trust from Mongolia. And today we are going to be taking you on a hike in the Gobi. It's such a pleasure to see you, Nadia. We don't get to see each other enough. Uh, you're in uh, Ulaanbaatar now, and we're just getting ready to go on this hike. Yeah, so uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Nadia. So I will be your guide on today's exciting snow leopard trail. So we are so glad you are able to join with us, and we will start our virtual nature trail through this South Kobe Desert in Mongolia very soon. I hope everyone's ready. Grab on to your pens and your paper and hold on tight because we're about to teleport to Mongolia. Are you ready? Here we yeah. go. So there below you can see the Mongolia map. And so this is where we are heading. So remember to Think of the right place while we teleport. Good idea. Wow, that was a smooth ride, right? <laughs> it almost felt like we didn't even leave our chairs. Nadia, I think that was the most smooth trip I've ever taken to Mongolia. Now, where are we? So we are now at the Snow Leopard Trust base camp in South Kobe Desert of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So is everyone here with us? Let me check. Seems like we all here. So do you have your pen and paper ready? And we can dust the sand off if you have some rough landing. <laughs> so, and uh, fantastic. So let's get it started. All right, let's check this map that you made for us, Nadia. This is amazing. Look everyone, this is the trail that we're going to go on that Nadia will be guiding us along the way. If we take a look, this yellow is where um, our base camp is. That's where we are now at base camp. And we're gonna be taking a little, um, a little hike from base camp to the Snow Leopard Valley here, where um, there are snow leopards known to be. And then we'll take the trail from the Snow Leopard Valley to the green pastures, and from there to the bird's uh, viewpoint. Uh, you can see this bird icon, and I know that this is a place where there's a great spot to scan for exciting animals. Isn't that right, Nadia? Right. Yeah, great. And then from the bird's viewpoint, we'll head to Rocky Ridge, uh, which is, I think, a steep hike. So we'll be having to prepare for that. And then from Rocky Ridge, we'll head to our, uh, visit a herder at his herder camp, maybe have some tea, and then head to Palace Peak, and then the summit of perpetual ice. That sounds very exciting, Nadia. And, uh, and from there, uh, that sounds like a great trail that you've prepared for us. Yeah, so I guess it will be. So, and I'm glad you are joining with us. And uh, at the end of our hike, we will end our hike back at the Snow Leopard Base Camp. So are you ready? Great, so let's go. All right. So the terrain is a bit rugged and very rocky. So be careful as we step on the stones, rocks. So please make sure also you stick close with us. So we don't want, want to lose you. <laughs> That's a good point, Nadia. I imagine it's not easy to be found if you're lost in the Gobi. So please don't wander too far away. Um, another thing is, 
you want to stay close because Nadia and I will let you know if we see something along the way. So we want to be really quiet and keep your eyes and ears open. Are we ready? So I know you guys must be wondering if you've left the Earth and have come to Mars. <laughs> But the uh, worries, we are still on Earth. So many people say the Mongolian Gobi Desert is very similar to Mars in terms of the landscape. But there are many rare and elusive animals that live here, like such as a snow leopard and wild horse and better vulture. So take a look around. This is a special place in Ogobi that we call the Snow Leopard Valley. So we call it because we know that many snow leopard visit in this valley and we're going to start our hike today here so if we can find so many signs of snow leopard also we will keep our, our eyes and ears open to find more animals and plants in a gobi so we rarely see the snow leopard but often we feel like they are watching us so today we might watch by snow leopard can you imagine, everyone, Nadia, can you imagine? We might be watched by a snow leopard today. That would be so amazing if we were being watched by one. In order to see some of the animals and hopefully be watched by a snow leopard at least, we want to be uh, really quiet and observant. You can guess what will happen if we're noisy, right? We wouldn't see anything. They would just run away. Um, I know when we get to a place where I think we see something or Nadia sees something, we'll say shh as a signal, and then you know to look around and be really quiet. How does that sound, Nadia? Yes, that sounds great. Great. All right, let's head. And wow, look at this beautiful bushy plant. Does everyone see this? Nadia, what is this plant? So this is a species called a prunus. So local name is boils. So this is a basically wild peach. So I'm sure you guys must know in the, how peach tea tastes like. Mm. It's full of yummy, juicy plant in it. And a lot of animals feeds on this seed when they were ripe. So yeah. maybe let's get closer. Look, so do you see these very beautiful pink flowers? Their flowering period is very short, only two weeks. Really? Only two weeks? We're so lucky to see these pretty flowers right now. Uh, the prunus really add so much, you know, color and beauty, and they're, they're so delicate in the gobi, you know? Uh, it's so, so nice. Oh, look, everyone, quiet. Shh. Oh my gosh, Nadia, look down there. What is that? Do you see it near the bush? Oh yeah. So there's a little fellow on a twig. So it's called the common red pole. Mm -hmm. So you know what you noticed about this bird? This is called, because the name, you can see this little red spot on the top of its head little bit yeah yeah i see it just a little bit in the yeah. front mm -hmm. that's what their name so they eat a seeds that's great so cute yeah all right let's move on let's see what else we see hey everyone look down you know oh Does my goodness know who is this yeah, so take a minute to look at the long whiskers and fluffy fur, which keeps them warm. So because cute. when it get cold in the very cold in Mongolia winter, it their their fur is helps them to keep warm. Also, these big ears for good hearing. So this is a called the pika. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you know that, but maybe it's new animal for you. Some other people. Pikas are small mammals that is closely related to rabbits and hares. They often hide between piles of rocks and live with many other pikas. 
So pikas are really good at hiding and scampering in the rocky areas of mountain. So they're fantastic at jumping from rock to rock. Oh my goodness, a little jumper. He's so cute. We should probably move on so we don't scare him, right, Nadia? Yeah. Okay, let's go, everyone. Bye, little pika. And look at this, you guys. Take a look. Can you see those big horns over there on the skull? Can you guess what this skull is? I'll give you a hint. It's an ungulate. An ungulate is, uh, you may know, it's an animal that has hooves, like maybe a wild goat or a wild sheep. And this horns are from uh, our golly. You can tell that because of the massive horns that come up and they're curving up and then they cur curve back inward. That's, that's a way to tell if it's an argali. It's that curve back inward. And this is a really good sign for us because argali is a very important food source for snow leopards. And so perhaps this means that we'd have a chance to see the argali or maybe even the snow leopard if we're really lucky, um, or snow leopard sign. So let's keep our eyes and ears open. Shall we continue? It's amazing to see that big horn. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, wow, the Rupert. How strange it's growing in a Gobi desert, right? So it looks so bright and beautiful. This is a rich nutrient, so even people eat wild rhubarb. So when I was a kid, we loved to eat the rhubarb when we were playing. You know, I remember a picture that I've seen of you when you were younger, Nadia, of you sucking on the end of a rhubarb stem. I love that picture. And these colors are just amazing. You know, you look out at the Gobi with all the sand colors and then pop, look at these beautiful colors. And um, if we want to take a minute, uh, since we've come across the horns and now the rhubarb, we can uh, maybe, maybe you want to write or color um, in your paper. So maybe I can spell them for you. The rhubarb is R H U B. A R B and the Argali is spelled A R G A L I Argali. So we can pause for a minute while you finish writing the names of the rhubarb and the Argali, and maybe uh, later we'll have time to draw something in there. So take a good last look. And uh, why don't we check the map and see where we are, how far we've gone? Yes. So we are almost at the, the bird's viewpoint. Okay. And hope you had a lot of energy left. And we will go to Rocky Ridge next. Okay. So it's just a little bit up to this slope. And so let's scan the rock for uh, any wildlife. Let's use this hand binoculars. Mm -hmm. So let's look up to the mountains. Perhaps we will see even some smaller animals too. Oh, Shh. look up to the hills. Where is it? Where, where? <gasps> it's on a cliff. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Did you see that? Can you I guess see. what animal is it? I'll give you a clue. So we just saw the skull. Yes, so that's right. This is our gully. Our gully is the largest living wild sheep in the world. That's amazing. I've not seen our gully so close before. What a treat, Nadia. Thanks for pointing them out. It's really incredible and lucky. Everybody take a last look at those horns and then we can move on, head up the trail. So let's take a break and we have been on a trail for a while and you need to have some drink of water and rest. So maybe while we rest, let's look up to into the, this mountain saddle. Saddles are a little deep between these two peaks. Do you see that? So many animals, including a snow leopard, 
walks along this top bridge. So seems they like the saddles. So let's see if anything moving up there. Again, let's use our hand binocular. That always helps for us. Mm -hmm. Do you see anything? So, nothing so far. So let's find a comfortable sit around and write down some more of the things you have seen so far. That's a good idea. And you know, maybe even drawing some of the things we've seen. I know that Nadi and I like to draw some of the things that we come across. It kind of helps us remember them um, better. And also we notice that sometimes it helps us notice the little details of things as you're trying to draw them. So you could maybe draw the rhubarb or the algali horn, or maybe why don't we look around here and see what's near us and you can see if there's something you'd like to draw. So if we look around, oh, look at this rock right here. Do you notice, oh my goodness, there are drawings on the rock. Do you see that? I wonder how old those are, Nadia, what do you think? So would, would you believe me if I told you that this painting could have been made as long as 10,000 years ago? Wow. Yeah. So what we can see from here is like the man riding a horns and using bow and arrows to hunting another animal. Mm -hmm. So maybe a deer, so based on these antlers. So it's so exciting, isn't it? So it, this painting has survived so many years. It's really incredible to think of something that old that we are, that we are so close to and watching. It's amazing. Um, everybody, take a look at this uh, this last um, this rock, and then here, let's keep walking. Listen, everyone. Do you see this? And listen to the sound it's making. This is a, a, a Mongolian ground jay. That's right, isn't it? A Mongolian ground jay? Yes. So this little fellow loves the foraging on the ground. But you can see them the perching on a rock right now. So beautiful, isn't it? It's incredible. So let's move on. Wow, look at this. Do you see this small dip and mound? Like, this is a snow leopard scrape. A snow leopard scrape, that's amazing. Uh, does everyone see this? There's like a little dip and then a mound on the top. Uh, this is a typical sign of a territorial marking for snow leopards. This is basically how they talk to each other. You, they, they don't travel in big groups of, of snow leopards. And so if they want to leave a message, then they urinate on the ground or spray on a rock. And then they, they take their back feet and they scrape this, this uh, mound. And then it's like a house cat when they go to the bathroom. And so that's how they leave a sign. And then another snow leopard will come up and they'll sniff it and they'll maybe urinate on it again and then they'll scrape it again. And so uh, this is how they communicate with each other. It's pretty lucky that we saw snow leopard signs. Uh, maybe we should keep our eyes out for more. Yeah. Wow, what do we have beside it? Looks like a snow leopard paw print. And it's almost big as my hands. Perhaps there is a, you know, one nearby on snow leopard. We have a more higher chance to see snow leopard. So let's see on a map where we are. Great. Let's go check the map. Okay, let's see. Wow, we were almost halfway done. Uh, we're just about to get to the herders camp. Uh, and um, I hope you're enjoying the hike so far, everyone. We've come quite a long way. And now maybe we can head over and warm up and see if the herder is at his camp and maybe grab some tea. So keep your eyes out along the way and we'll see if we can have any signs that the herder's around. Or maybe, well, look at this right in front of us. You see these camels. Have you seen camels, everyone, with two humps before? 
these are domesticated by the people who live here in Mongolia and they travel in groups like this. I love seeing the camels, Nadia. It's such a treat. Yeah, me too. And look at their different colors. Yeah. So beautiful. Wow, oh, look at these goats. They probably come from the grazing and the herders uh, close by. So this corral helps protect goats so they don't get caught by a snow leopard. So a snow leopard will sometimes eat domestic livestock like goat and sheep. Mm -hmm. But those goats are relaxed in a corral right now. So you, do you see this white tent near them? That is Mongolian gear. So where people live in. It can easily dismantle so that people can move with their sheep and goats to another pasture when they need the new grasses. So maybe we can go inside for a cup of tea? Oh, that sounds nice. Let's do, let's go visit. And it's so nice and warm and cozy in here, isn't it? Uh, come on into the yurt, to the gear, which is what they're called here, Mongolia. And take a look at this, this steel structure with the pipe. That is a, a stove that's here in the middle of the gear. And it's uh, used to keep the gear warm and for cooking all the meals. All the meals are cooked right on the top of that stove. Um, if you see the box that is next to the stove, it's full of wood and dung for burning in the stove. Keep everything warm. And look at the top of the yurt. You can see it has those beautiful spokes. I love the structure of the girt, of the gear. It's so, uh, it's so nice. So everyone, why don't we just take a last sip of tea and warm up and look around and then we should start and get back on the trail. Are you ready, Nadia? Yes. All so right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> look around. Oh gosh. Shh. Everyone, a quick look down. Oh my God. So there are big rock, so nearby there's something moving, but it's so well camouflaged. So can you see that? I can. It, it looks like a big fluffy house cat, Nadia, but I know it's not. Tell us about what that is. Yeah. So this is a palace cat. So look through your binoculars. We can get the closer look. Okay. Oh, there it is, Nadia, there it is. Does everyone see? This is a palace cat. Uh, the palace cat is a wild cat that you can find here in the Gobi and they hunt by stalking and ambushing their prey. And mostly they're eating small mammals like pika. Look at the fluffy, fluffy fur and that <laughs> face. Amazing. So cute. It is, it is. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to move on, but we probably should so we don't scare it away. Yeah. Come on, everyone. It's so great that we saw the palace cat, but yeah. now this bush. So it's called the golden caragana. So it's great for holding soil together and it helps to stop desertification in, in Gobi. Mm -hmm. So this plant is really crucial plays a role in the Gobi Desert. Yeah, holding the sand into its roots. That's great. All right, keep your eyes out. Let's see if we see anything else up in these hills behind. Oh, there, by the ridge. Do you see these huge ibex? Wow. Look at this beautiful big horns. There must be old male ibex. Hmm tell because the horns are so big and also they have this beard. Did you see that? Do you see those long beards that they have? That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there are more. There are, wow, look at them all. Yeah, so the smaller horn ones are female in youngers. They, are, they often travel in a group, so-called herd. So they're amazing animal. Guess what? Like Argali, they are another very important 
animal for the snow leopard survival. Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So snow leopard is number one food is ibex. Yeah, so it's it's important really that we protect uh, both species uh, to protect the snow leopard. We need to protect the ibex, right? And in order for that to happen, it means we need to protect these pastures, the mountain pastures, or what some might call meadow, right? If we have a healthy meadow, then we'll have these nice healthy ibex, which means we're helping the snow leopard. I'm so amazed we saw so many of the ibex today. They're usually so shy. So lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we look around and see what else is around here? Wow, look at this. Such a beautiful plant we have. So it's called uh, Alum. Can you say the name? Alum? Alum. Yeah. So this is a basically wild onion. So I like to eat it. It's mm -hmm. so nice in flavor. So if you can imagine like a garlic, an onion, like a smell, so that's the alum, the smell of the alum. Mm, I love that smell. And look over here, this butterfly right next to the alum. I think this, yes, this is a painted lady. That's the name of this butterfly, painted lady. Isn't that right, Nadia? Right. So you know, crazy thing about this butterfly, it migrates a huge distance, like when they fly for a desert of Central Asia to Africa and all the way to Europe and Britain and Ireland. So crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. So this little guy could have flown all the way from Ireland to Mongolia. It's amazing for such a little person, a little, a little butterfly. Aw, very nice. Well, that was a nice little sighting next to the Allium. Oh, so it looks like we're almost done with our trail. So we can see our base camp in a distance. Yeah, it's getting a little darker out, isn't it? Yeah. Let's take a look at the, the map, Nadia, and see how far we've gone. Yeah, so... We almost reached at the base camp and hope you enjoyed the trail with us and so glad we are able to see a little bit of this Tost region. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you take a look at this, we can see how long we've gone. We've went, uh, we're back at base camp. So we went all the way around Snow Leopard Valley and uh, the green pastures and the bird viewpoints and Rocky Ridge. And then we went to the herders camp where we had tea and we actually got to see a palace cut today. Then we saw the snow leopard pug mark, the footprint and scrape here at the summit of perpetual ice. And now we're back at base camp. Incredible. Now we didn't get to see an actual snow leopard, um, but they are elusive and really difficult to see. It's so rare. So I hope you're not too disappointed. We got to see so many things today um, and pretty, pretty amazed that we got to see some of the argali and the ibex but wait jen what what is it one i think i saw something moving you up did there. everybody take a look yes everyone please keep really really quiet and crouch low that might be a snow leopard really <gasps> yeah it could be Wow, look at this. What a beautiful, what amazing. So you're so lucky to see the snow leopard because they're so hard to see. Can you see this furry, how furry they are in their long tail that keeps them warm and long tail helps them to maintain the balance when they were hunting. It's amazing. And does everyone see the tail? They're such a master of camouflage. You know, when a lot of people think of snow leopard, Nadia, of course, they think of snow, right? And that they're camouflaged in the snow. But take a look, everyone. There's no snow right now. And yet, look how camouflaged. It's hard to even see the tail, right? Uh, and, and from far away, this would just blend right into the rocks and to these little tiny plants and the colors. 
So they're just amazing at camouflage. I can't believe we're actually seeing one. I'd love to watch longer, but we should just move away. That's incredible. Everybody take a last look. How lucky. Yeah. So that's the end of the trail, everyone. So what an ending with the snow leopard. We're so lucky, right? Yeah, we certainly are. And uh, Nadia, I just want to say thank you so much. It's been so nice to have a chance to be on this trail with, with you and for all of us to be following you and seeing all the things that you're so great at observing and, and finding so that we can have such an amazing sightings today. Um, does everybody remember what we've seen? If you could actually uh, try to write them on your paper. I know we saw the Ibex and Argali and Pallas cat. Remember the wild Allium and the Pika. And you can complete your list if you'd like to later. Um, but uh, it's nice to keep track of everything. We saw so many things today, Nadia. Yeah. So thank you everyone for joining with us. And uh, so we're at our base camp and uh, so I hope we had you had a, such a wonderful, fun, wonderful time with us. So you are such a amazing observers. <laughs> yes, I just want to say thank you to everyone too for coming and and uh, keep. We just wanted to leave you and with the idea of keeping your eyes and your ears and your noses keen, so you can make observations wherever you are. And thanks to you and your family for joining us around the globe for snow leopards. Uh, for this event that we're raising awareness and, and uh, funding for conservation. Uh, there are more sessions coming up, so if you want to stick around, you can look around at Town Hall to see what's coming up next. And if you want to help some of the children from Mongolia so that they can go and have a similar experience by going to the eco camp and staying in a yurt and going with Nadia and some of the team to learn more about snow leopards and about wildlife, that's important for snow leopards, then you can go click right on that little piggy icon. Do you see that on the left? And you can donate anything, whether it's a dollar or whether it's $50, which is what it costs for one child to stay for a week at the eco camp. Um, that would be amazing. And it's already amazing that you're here and that you've come to this event and we just appreciate it and your passion for the cats. Thank you and I hope you had a wonderful time. Bye-bye.